There are three countries in the world that can operate bombers. The United States, and we know a lot about them. Russia, and unfortunately, we have seen them at work in the past year. And China, and we know very little about them. Actually, it's not true. We know something about the Chinese bombers. We know that they really up their game when it comes to training. The PLA every decade or so publishes a document called, in English, the OMTE, which is the acronym of Outline of Military Training and Evaluation. The last and the current one was published in 2018 and revised in 2019. The OMTE describes the scenarios that need to be trained and the capabilities that every bomber formation must be proficient in. As recently as 2014, bomber units used to fall short of their training requirements. Segments of the OMTE were ignored because of lack of time. In fact, the Chinese bomber fleet was reluctant to fly at night or in bad weather. For example, in 2015, an H-6 bomber of the 8th Air Division, after a training patrol above the South China Sea, had to unexpectedly land in low visibility. And apparently this was considered a noteworthy achievement. The Chinese split the day in three sections, day 8 to 16, night 16 to midnight, and after midnight, that is 0 to 8. Traditional training missions took just one segment, so the time and the mission complexity were really constrained. By the mid-2000s, with the growing Chinese ambitions, came the realization that this type of training was simply not adequate anymore. In August 2018, several H6Us of the 8th Air Division executed a redeployment in central China, a few thousands of kilometers away from their bases. There, they conducted flight refueling missions in a quite challenging environment. The weather wasn't ideal, electronic jamming was operating, and last-minute route changes were introduced. And this was just an example of the latest Chinese training syllabus. Long missions lasting even more than 24 hours with stops at different air bases are becoming increasingly common. During these missions, the cooperation with different units is tested in bad weather at night and in difficult conditions. And one particular type of these missions are those where the units are relocated to the Tibetan Plateau. There, the difficult environmental conditions, the altitude in particular, are very challenging and the Chinese bombers are training to operate there. A constant element of bomber training exercises is now a degraded electronic environment. Electronic jamming is always present and the pilots train toward executing the mission without using the radio. Radio silence is becoming the norm. In general, there are fewer and fewer scripted situations with every mission including autonomous opponents, unexpected events and, when planned, live fire exercises. In 2013, China declared an air defense identification zone in the East China Sea. That event marked the beginning of a flurry of activity to establish an air presence in the region. The bomber fleet was involved too. In 2015, the H-6 bombers started flying missions through the Miyako Strait, north of Taiwan, and through the Bashi Channel, south of Taiwan. 
Bombers penetrate deep into the Pacific and execute simulated attacks to naval targets. They often get in range of Guam, potentially simulating missile strikes on the American base. These missions have progressively grown in numbers and complexity. In 2016, a single mission through the Miyako Strait included 40 aircraft. There were 16 bombers, but also Su-30s, Su-35s, AWACS and tankers. And in the last few years, the Chinese are even building remotely piloted target vessels capable of autonomous movement, which are used as target replicas. Moreover, the H-6 is not a modern airframe, so long flights are quite taxing for the pilots. So the Chinese now train the pilots physically and mentally to cope with the long hours required for these missions. It is also quite important to note the increased emphasis on training young pilots in these complex environments rather than relying on more expert personnel to guarantee the success. It seems that they have a rule that during these complex missions, 50% of all the flight personnel must be junior. These complex missions over water are becoming increasingly common and the Chinese Air Force seems to have become quite comfortable with them. In fact, they're investing in creating a maritime auxiliary organization that has the quite odd name of Air Force Naval Bases. This organization is picking up all the auxiliary activities connected with operating at sea. These include search and rescue and search and rescue training, the meteorological service, the management of target ships, and so on. Taiwan and the ocean beyond are not the only Chinese concern. China has been overly active in the South China Sea too. As many will know, China is claiming several islands in the South China Sea, but this claim is disputed by the other countries bordering the sea. The Chinese have built military and civilian installations in several of them, including runways that can be used to operate the bombard. Fighter aircraft have been operating from these islands since their construction, and it is a well-known fact. And the bombers have started too. In 2018, bombers from the 108th Regiment of the 36th Air Division redeployed on Woody Island, and there they operated for at least a couple of days. This was another example of long-range deployment, but till then they never redeployed on the basis of the South China Sea. Now it seems that the Chinese regularly conduct long-range bomber patrols in the South China Sea with two ships flights that may or may not be accompanied by escort fighters. And this is another example of the new normal for the Chinese bomber fleet. Now, I can hear the objection that many of you may have at this point. What the Chinese are doing is, after all, what an efficient air force should be doing. Western air forces have been doing this for decades, so what's the point? Well, the point is that they were not doing this till recently, but in a few years they turned around and started doing it. So the point that I'm trying to make is that the Chinese are growing. The gap with the West gets thinner and thinner with every training mission. It is clear that the Chinese are trying to catch up militarily with the West and they are trying to play the same game. They have a symmetric vision of the military challenge. They should not be easily dismissed. Thank you for watching this short video and an even bigger thank you to all those who are supporting the channel by being a members on Patreon or by one of donations on PayPal. You can also support the channel by buying models from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I have a small percentage and there is no extra cost for you. If you haven't yet, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is helping a lot. So, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.